Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding news. The first one is the results of the Japan Pro, the last Mr. Olympic qualifier of the year. And as you can see, the winner was Theo Legirer, if that's how you pronounce his last name. So he won this show, he qualified for next year's Mr. Olympia, but if we're being honest, it wasn't really the toughest show to win. None of the top guys showed up, really. None of the guys from the top 10. Uh, in the middle here you can see Theo and Alfred Chiriak and those guys were top two and they were battling for that first. I thought Alfred was sharper from behind but overall also I thought the guy on the left looked really impressive. Uh, his name is Xiaoming Yan and uh, he looked great. He has like really you know bubbly kind of look but I think he was uh, way too short, way too small to be you know top two at this show. Also, on the far right, you can see Roman Fritz, who took 4th place at this show. And by the way, this is his 10th show this year. The record so far is actually 11 pro shows in a year, and it's being held by Milos Archev. And Milos actually did it twice, but back in the day there weren't that many shows. Today there are a lot of shows, and Roman did 10, which is really a lot. None of the guys today compete that much. Roman really killed it this year. He won one show when he placed, you know, top two, top three, top four many, many times. So I thought this was really awesome. I mean, if he can't be a top Olympian, he can be known for competing as often as he does. And uh, again, he is pretty successful at these, you know, lower level pro shows. He is still, you know, placing in the top or winning even. So he was at the Mr. Olympia as well. And I'm sure he will manage to qualify next year. I mean, this guy has been making progress lately. And again, this is his 10th show. It is also the last pro show of the year, last Mr. Olympia qualifier. So I'm sure, again, he will qualify later. He has no trouble holding the condition. Actually, he has trouble losing the striations on his glutes. As long as he's training and eating clean and, you know, being on gear and stuff like that, he is basically shredded all year round. So maybe next year he's going to do all the shows. Why not? If somebody is paying for his expenses, then why the hell not? Anyways, this was, as you can see, the top three. And uh, yeah, I think, I think Theo won very decisively he is going to the Mr. Olympia after winning this show he won't have to compete next year until the 2024 Mr. Olympia how well will Theo do at the Mr. Olympia well maybe he will crack the top 10 next year we'll see all right next we got something kind of interesting so we got a pausing video of Andrew Jacked one week before the 2023 Mr. Olympia now the show is over we know what happened we know what he looked like on stage so, why are we looking at this video right now? Well, we got a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, it's a never before seen video. It wasn't posted at that time, it was posted now, after the Mr. Olympia. And the second reason is because I want to analyze his physique at this moment and uh, try and figure out why was he off at the Mr. Olympia. And was it really a picking mistake? Because Andrew Jack on that Mr. Olympia stage was really soft. I mean, this is definitely not his best condition. Arguably, his worst. This and the Arnold Classic UK, maybe. I mean, he did have the fullness. It was a good fullness, but he definitely could have been sharper. Now, I was wondering, was this because of the peak week? Did he mess up the peak week and just didn't peak right? Was he simply off? for whatever reason, or was it simply that he wasn't lean enough? I mean, look at his tight tricep, this is crazy. If this guy was more sure, a little bit more conditioned, he would have placed fourth instead of Brandon Curry, for sure. I don't really see him battling against uh, Samson and beating him, maybe, in some time in the future. He did make a lot of progress in that back, but like from Texas Pro this year, where he beat Hunter Labrada, he beat him again this time around, but I don't think this was a better version of, of, of Andrew. I don't think so. I thought he was off with conditioning, and once again I was wondering why was he off. Well, after seeing this video, which was taken one week before the Mr. Olympia, I think it's pretty safe to say that he wasn't really shredded. So I would say it wasn't really a picking mistake. Maybe he could have been you know, more dehydrated and drier, and therefore look sharper, I don't think that is really the reason. I think they simply went with the fullness. They probably didn't want to push the conditioning too far, because if you do that, you know, you lose some size, you lose some fullness, 
and Andrew actually looked huge, he actually looked really big. So you can see right here in this lineup, he managed to beat Michal Krizo, who was, by the way, in far better conditioning than him, especially in the lower body, but I would say upper body as well, especially the lower back. He actually, he wasn't able to beat Brandon Curry, Brandon was fourth, Andrew was fifth, and he did beat Hunter Labrada once again. Now looking at this pose, at this photo, he does look much better, but I, I'm not so sure about this result, but yeah, I guess he won it, and I think maybe if he was, you know, more conditioned and a little bit slimmer because of that, maybe he actually wouldn't be able to beat Hunter, maybe he beat him because he was that big and that full, if he was a little bit sharper and also really full, if he looked the way he looked at Texas Pro, he would have beaten Brandon Curry here for sure. But would have he been able to actually challenge Samson Dauda and battle for that top 3 spot? I don't think so. I don't see it. Not, not yet. Maybe in this photo it kind of looks closer than it actually was. I think Samson is a lot bigger. He actually has a lot of muscle on that frame. He is completely filled out. And Andrew, he still needs to work, you know, on getting bigger. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's a huge guy. He is like really big, you know, structure-wise, he's a tall guy, he is also really wide in the shoulders, he has that, that structure that is required, and he can put on the muscle, we've seen that, like, he grew a lot lately, he improved his back a lot lately, he needs to improve, you know, the conditioning in those, uh, in those glutes and, uh, and the back as well, and he needs to uh, bring up those hamstrings, and just overall, he actually needs to get bigger if he wants to be a top threat, you know, top three guy, and to actually challenge guys like Derek Lansford and, and, and Hari Chopin. I mean, these guys are much shorter than him, but uh, they are, they're packed with muscle, they are so big. Samson is doing a good job with that, even though he's a taller guy as well, like, he, he packed a lot, ton of muscle, and Andrew needs to do some growing, and hopefully he will, but I think an off-season is definitely required, I don't know if he's gonna do the Arnold Classic again, or other shows in the middle of the year, as a fan, I would be excited to see him, but honestly, as a fan, also, I wouldn't like to see him, because I want to see him, you know, much bigger, changed, and that requires an actual off-season, which he actually didn't have since he turned pro, so once again, he needs some time off, some time to focus on growing, and if he grows, like, another 20 pounds, then, yeah, I can see him and Samson battling it out for the first spot in some time in the future. And next up we got the injured Nick Walker, who is not really able to train legs as of lately, he's out of a wheelchair at least, and he is in the gym all the time training, but I'm guessing he's only training his upper body, maybe he's doing some work on his right leg, but the upper body is actually looking really good, like he looks fresh, he looks like he, you know, filled out nicely, not too much, he's still very very lean, and he has that fullness, he has that size, you know, you can see the videos, like, he's training really freaking hard, he's not taking time off, yeah, he's not gonna be competing at the Arnold Classic, because he needs more time to recover, but honestly, I feel like maybe he's gonna change his mind, if his recovery actually goes well, and he's, you know, really, he's feeling good, and he's able to train sooner than he expects, which I believe is gonna be the case, then he might change his mind, I mean, he recently broke up with his girlfriend or his fiance. I think they got engaged the weeks before the, the breakup, and they lived together, it was a long relationship, so I'm sure he is a mess right now, I mean, losing a girlfriend and not being able to compete at the Mr. Olympia, so maybe, like, if he recovers soon enough, maybe he's gonna focus all that negative energy into a prep for a bodybuilding show, and which better show than uh, Arnold Classic, but again, he needs to recover, and if he does, once again, you know, prepping for a show is a really good distraction, you, you focus on that fully, and you're doing something positive, and potentially, if he wins, he can gain a lot of money, I mean, now, it seems like Hari Chopin is doing it, I mean, we don't know as of yet, but he might be, Samson confirmed it, so it's definitely not easy money for Nick, but if he decides to do it, and if he can do it properly, if he can really focus and really give 100%, he can win, I'm not saying he's going to win, but he can win, he has the tools, and I believe if he showed up at the Mr. Olympia the way he looked to one week before the Mr. Olympia, I think he would have beaten Samson Dauda, so if he shows up like that at the Arnold Classic and Samson doesn't improve all that much, 
then sure, Nick can win the Arnold Classic. Whatever you guys think though, tell me in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye bye.